What's up, folks? This is your boy, Darko. Welcome to another edition of Kindles and Kicks. Okay, so today I am doing the nightclub book tag, which was created by my homie Brian over at Belltube. Not only did he create the tag, but he tagged me in it. I was also tagged by my bestie D over at Through the Pages with D. So gotta answer the tag. Here we go. Number one, cocktail hour. Name a book that pairs perfectly with your favorite drink. Okay, so I'm not an alcohol drinker. I'm very boring. I mostly drink water, regular water, seltzer water, lemon water. That's me day to day. When I do want to add a little flavor and a little spice to my life, I do like a nice ginger ale. And so when I was thinking about ginger ale, I think the book that pairs perfectly is Dune by Frank Herbert. Now hear me out. So ginger ale is a very spicy soda, especially if you get the bold ginger ale or if you ever had it organically made at a market, it's very spicy. And so Dune, what is it about? A spice. A lot of the conflict and a lot of the plot is driven by this commodity that's a type of spice that everyone wants and needs. Dune is kind of spicy in a way and ginger ale is spicy. They go hand in hand. All right, number two is Neon Lights. Name a book whose cover immediately grabs your attention like lights in a club, in a nightclub. Um, I would have to say the book that wouldn't burn by Mark Lawrence. That's like one of the illest and dopest, dopest covers in recent years I've ever seen on any type of book in any genre. I mean, matter of fact, it's one of the few hard copies I have of a book because, you know, I mostly read on Kindle, but that book I bought just so I can put it on my shelf because it is just that ill. And the story is just as ill to match the cover. Number three is The Bouncer. What book did you have to put down because it just wasn't letting you in? This is kind of funny for me to say because I'm in the middle of Malazan right now. My first attempt at Malazan, I got stuck at Midnight Tides. I could not get into that book. And, you know, since being on BookTube, I learned a lot of people have a problem with Midnight Ties because it's like a whole, whole new characters, whole new place, whole new century or millennial millennium. So, yeah, Midnight Ties, just really couldn't get into it. But um, hopefully I'll have better luck on my current read through. Right now, I'm on Memories of Ice. So... We'll see how that goes. So number four is DJ's Choice and is asking me what book would I recommend to someone new to the fantasy genre? So depending on the age, like I always say Harry Potter, that's like my go-to because I loved Harry Potter and I think it's great for all age groups. If it's someone younger, I would say also Percy Jackson because that is a series I enjoyed in my young adult years. If it's someone older, I would say The Dresden Files. I know a lot of people always say Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, but I think someone brand new to fantasy, it might be a bit much dealing with the alimantic, whatever metals and all that other stuff. Whereas Dresden Files, it takes place in our world and it's very straightforward with the magic and it deals with creatures that are already very popular like werewolves. So it doesn't take like a huge broadening of your imagination to really get into the Dresden Files like it does for other fantasy books, at least in my opinion. So number five is Disco Ball, and name a book that made you feel like you were part of a vibrant and glittering world. So I'm gonna have to borrow my girl D's answer, or at least steal it. Um, and I have to go with The Spear That Cuts Through Water by Simon Jimenez. That book was extremely vibrant, 
and very colorful, like colorful in the sense of like different hues and different shades like of the characters as far as their physical traits, but also colorful in their personalities and the way they spoke and interacted. It's just an extremely entertaining and engaging book. And I can't think of anything offhand that is more vibrant at the moment. So number six is Dance Floor Diva. And it says, name a book that has you dancing from the first page to the last. I would definitely have to say Lightbringer by Pierce brown and yo like when i first finished dark age i was blown away that is still my favorite book in pierce brown's red rising series but after it ended i could not wait to read lightbringer so as soon as i opened the book I was ready to go from page one. And Pierce Brown did not let me down. Although I like Dark Age a tad bit more, Lightbringer is still off the chain and nothing but constant action, constant movement, constant plot development and character development from page one to the end. I don't know how he's gonna top it with his last book, but he has knocked it out the park with both Dark Age and Lightbringer. Number seven is guest list and name an author you would invite to an exclusive book theme party. So this is gonna be crazy because this particular author, I have not liked anything I've read by her so far, but I like her as a person. And that's N.K. Jemison. I have not liked the Broken Earth trilogy. I tried to get into it and I could not. I didn't, I DNF'd it. The, I DNF'd the first book. I did not enjoy it. However, I really do like her as a person. I am so impressed and enthralled whenever she's on a podcast or an interview. I appreciate her appreciate how transparent she is about her writing process and how she imagines her worlds and magic systems and like everything. I just have a, a great appreciation for her approach to writing. Even though I have not liked anything I've read from her, I would just enjoy sitting down and talking to her, especially considering she is a black female in fantasy, which is, you know, extremely rare, especially to reach that level of success. Like if only to congratulate her, to express how much I admire her um, achievements. But I know it would, it would, the conversation would probably get awkward when I mentioned that I haven't liked anything she has written, but hey, maybe it would be a fruitful conversation and she'll say things to persuade me to give her works another try because now I know or have a deeper understanding of where the inspiration comes from. I mean, you never know. Number eight is VIP entrance and name a book that you feel privileged to have read before it became popular. So for me, I would have to say Game of Thrones. I was put on to A Song of Ice and Fire, that book series, years before the show premiered on HBO. So even though I, I wasn't a fan of it back, like way back in the 90s, when it was first, you know, when it first became popular, but in the early 2000s, I really got into A Song of Ice and Fire. And um, Game of Thrones is still to this day one of my favorite books ever. And to see how widely popular it has become has been insane, especially since the first time I read it, hardly anybody outside of fantasy readers even heard of it. Now it's probably one of the highest selling fantasy book series in the world, thanks to the hit show, which, you know, despite the last couple of seasons was a very well-written and well-acted show. And so yeah, Game of Thrones, loved it the first time I read it and still love it today. And I'm happy to see how popular that book in the show and the Song of Ice and Fire world has become. So number nine is Dance Battle. And it says, name two characters from different books you would like to see in the dance-off. So first I would have to pick Kalam from 
Malazan, Book of the Fallen, or Dead House Gates, which I just fin finished reading. So, Clam, because he's an assassin and he moves, like, so swiftly. And V from V for Vendetta. Because both of those guys got some serious moves. They're, they're like killers slash assassins slash martial artists. So, it would be interesting to see how that translates into dancing because both martial arts and dancing require similar physical control over your body. So it would be nice if instead of using those physical attributes to kill and hurt people, they use them to have some fun and dance to some dance off. You know, I think that would be great. So V and Kalam. Those two guys. So number 10 is Midnight Read. And what's a book you couldn't put down and end up reading it all night? There's been quite a few books for me, but the first one I can remember, like as far back as I can go, would be Goblet of Fire. When that book was released, I got it on day one and I stayed up all day and all night to read that book. I think to this day, I could be wrong, but I think to this day, that is probably the longest book I ever read in one day. And you know, Goblet of Fires, when Harry Potter, you know, they started to get pretty chunky. So yeah, knocked it out in one day, enjoyed every minute of it. And not only that, as soon as I was finished, guess what I did? Started it over and read it all over again the next day. So yeah, Goblet of Fire is still my favorite Harry Potter book in the series and I enjoy it every time I read it. So number 11 is After Party. What's the book that left you with a hangover and unable to start a read immediately after finishing it? Most recently is Dead House Gates uh, because after I finished that, it took me much longer than I wanted to. And it wasn't because I wasn't enjoying it. It was mainly because of life, work, and family. When I finished it, I had to take a break from Malazan for about a week or so. And, you know, and, and I'm still like kind of reading Memories of Ice. I'm not all in it. I've kind of taken a break and reading some lighter fare to, you know, change my palate a bit. So, but yeah, Dead House Gates for that one. You know, it was, it was a phenomenal read, but still, needed to take a break afterwards. So number 12 is Late Night Conversations. And it's which book left you thinking deeply and wanting to discuss it well into the night? So for this one, I'm going outside of the fantasy genre. It's a book called Mindhunter, and it's about serial killers. And it's written by someone who had an entire career profiling serial killers. And what was crazy about this book and had me discussing it well into the night, like on Reddit and other forums, was it delved deep into the psyche, behavioral patterns, and traumatic childhoods of these serial killers. And it had me feeling sympathy for people you're taught not to have any sympathy for. I mean, these guys brutally maimed, murdered, raped, tortured people, innocent people. But when you learn how they were sometimes brutalized and tortured themselves by their mothers or their fathers or other family members, then you're like, wow, I'm not surprised they wound up being serial killers. Who knows what kind of person I'd be if my mother left me locked in a dark basement only to come and feed me dog food every week. You know, like that type of treatment will screw you up. Now, I'm not saying this to justify their actions and any way, but I'm just saying there are layers to all of us, including serial killers. And the book Mind Hunter really brought that to light. And so I was on the internet. Um, I was talking to friends about it at night, like because it really threw me for a loop. Because never in my life would I have ever believed I would feel sympathy for 
serial killers. All right, so those are my answers for the nightclub book tag. Thank you, Brian, for tagging me in it. Thank you, my bestie D, for tagging me in it. Um, I'm going to tag a couple people. I'm going to tag Robin over at Only the Best Fantasy Novels. I don't know if he does tags, but that's my buddy. He's a huge supporter of the channel, so I'd like to see him do a tag. Um, I like to tag Britton, AKA some Okie dude. Every now and then he gets in the mood to do a tag. So maybe the next time you're in the mood, you'll do this one. Um, and I'd also like to tag Tom Orange. Um, great guy, great channel. Um, and hopefully he'll get a kick out of this tag. Thank you all for watching. This is Darko, Kindles and Kicks. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Peace. Hello. This is Kayla.